Thank you for joining us again on the newsroom. I am Mary Kanu. Gunmen have attacked the Independent National Electric Commission INEC office in Inugu South local government area, killing one police officer. INEC National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee Festus Okoye disclosed this in a statement on Monday. Okoye said although the security gatehouse of the office was raised, the attackers could not gain access to the main building due to the rapid response from the police and army personnel. And President Muhammad Buhari will depart Abuja for Nuak Shat on Monday to receive the African Award for Strengthening Peace in the Mauritanian capital on Tuesday. According to presidential spokesman Femi Adishino, the award is for the president's leadership role in promoting peace on the continent. Adishino said the award will be presented to President Buhari by the Abu Dhabi Peace Forum. Before receiving the award, the presidential aide said President Buhari will participate in the program of the third forum of the African Conference for Peace, where he will deliver a speech on milestones and gains in the African peace process. And Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo will depart Abuja for Monrovia, capital of Liberia, for a summit. According to a statement by the, by the Vice President spokesman Laulu Akonde, the Vice President is the special guest of honor at a forum tagged conversation with the Vice President and the young people, hosted by his Liberian counterpart, Jewel Howard Taylor. Osimbajo, who will depart Abuja for Monrovia on Monday for the one day visit to the West African nation, will also have a bilateral meeting with President George Weir of Liberia. And China has recorded nearly 60,000 fatalities linked to the coronavirus in the month since the country lifted its strict zero-COVID policy, accelerating an outbreak that is believed to have infected millions of people. The disclosure is the first time China has provided an official measure of the COVID wave now sweeping the country and represents a huge spike in the official death toll. Before the announcement, China said that only 37 people had died of COVID-19 since December 7 the day it ended its zero-COVID policy. In business, as the legal suit on the controversial national carrier Nigeria Air continues, lawyers representing the federal government and the domestic airlines are expected to meet at the Federal High Court in Lagos on Monday. The case had in December 2022 been adjourned to January 16, 2023. Meanwhile, lawyers representing Nigeria Air Minister of Aviation Hadi Serika and the Attorney General of the Federation Abubakar Malami on Friday filed a motion of notice asking the Federal High Court Lagos to transfer the case to the Federal High Court in Abuja. And growing frustration at the worsening energy situation in South Africa is seeing residents call for a national shutdown. On Monday, residents of Buxburg took to the street to protest against long hours of power cuts. This is not the first time Buxburg is witnessing violent protests, as protests over port services occur regularly in South Africa. And in sports, Barcelona defeated rivals Real Madrid 3-1 in the final of the 2022 and 2023 Spanish Super Cup played inside the King Fahd International Stadium, Saudi Arabia, on Sunday. It is a record-extending 14th Spanish Super Cup title for Barcelona, while Madrid are on 12. Goals from Gavi, Robert Lewandowski and Pedri gave Barcelona the first trophy since winning the 2020-2021 Copa del Rey. Well, that's the latest from the newsroom. Join us again for more updates. Thank you for watching.